are gonna be at Animal Encounters at someone's house. And we're really excited. We get to see Australian animals today. Wallabies and we're snakes on, and pythons. We're actually down to pet them. And we're gonna get to pet them, so it's gonna be super cool. All right, we better hurry in because we're gonna be late. <laughs> you wanna pet them? Cause I'm not gonna pet them really. I'm gonna pet them. Well, I know I'm gonna pet them when I'm ready to pet them. Yeah, so uh, I have heard that some of you, maybe all of you, have been studying Australia. What are some things that you've learned? Anybody wanna raise their hand and share with me some things I've learned about <laughs> Australia? What? Yeah. I know lots of kangaroos. There are! There are. And kangaroos, wallabies, and wallaroos are only found a couple places in the world. And one of them is Australia. Tasmania is another. There's a few that have been transplanted to New Zealand. Yes. Uh -huh. For you to be able to touch them. Um, and in fact, I will hold the head. He wants to tie himself in some knots here. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you're not sure, you guys can touch the tails. Guess what? Tails don't have teeth. They don't bite. <laughs> So he's never, ever, ever tried to bite anybody. And he's just a baby. He's going to get about twice this long. So um, you can touch him if you choose to. Okay, well, I'm going to bring him around and give you a chance. I'm just going to tell you about him first, and then I'm going to give you a chance to touch him. So this is what we call a coastal carpet python. Coastal means this guy likes to be at the beach. He kind of lives in the forests that are near the beach. They're kind of warm um, a lot of the time, and it's moist most of um, forest near the beaches are kind of like rain forests. Yeah. Now this guy um, is called a carpet python because somebody looked. These guys have kind of bright colors for a forest snake. Somebody looked at the pattern and they looked at that bright yellow color and said, hey, he looks like he camouflage on my carpet at home. And I said, yeah, he really looks like my living room rug. Watch what he does with his finger. With my, when I put my finger here, we'll see what he does with his tail. He curls around. And that is so he can he can anchor to a branch and be able to, he knows he's up off the ground and he can stretch his body from, from branch to branch. Um, and, and they don't go high in the trees, they'll kind of go low, but they're looking for things to eat. And but he does know he's up. He does, he's holding on to me. The reason he is wrapping around me is because one, I'm warm and he's cold blooded. He has to borrow heat from the sun or from the warmest thing around and that happens to be me at the moment. Um, and so he's soaking up my body heat. The other thing is he doesn't have any arms or legs. So if he doesn't wrap around me, he'd fall on the ground. <laughs> and he knows that, so he, he's making sure that he stays safe. You gonna reach out your hand to touch him? I really like him. What does he feel like? Yeah. Good, you guys are being so patient. I'll start on that and I'll start in the back. What do you think? Next time. Was he smooth? Yeah. yeah. What does that feel like? <laughs> and on a beach. Did you like that? You know, it feels bumpy, huh? What does it feel like? It doesn't even feel bumpy. Like, like, so smooth. like a square piece of wood. Now, this is Walter. Ooh, Walter. And Walter is a Woma <laughs> python. And Walter is still growing. He'll get about, about a foot longer than he is right now. Okay. And Walter uh, lives in the oh deserts no. in on? Australia. He could just oh. one second. He is from that famous outback area. Oh, oh, so he's okay with heat. Yeah, he's really good with heat. Um, he doesn't like it too, too hot. And he doesn't do a whole lot of basking like our lizards do. But um, he can definitely tolerate heat. He is a desert snake, and we can tell desert snakes from other snakes in that he looks like round like our other snake was. He's kind of egg-shaped. And that gives him some extra muscles. And when the sand gets really hot where he is, you've ever been to the beach and it's really hot on your feet, and you're like, ow, 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 ow. Um, he can, it kind of gets hot without him too. And he can actually pick up his body and use his body and kind of tiptoe across the sand cool. somewhere cooler. Yep, they're soft. Oh my goodness. It's like, it does feel like a beaded purse. Yeah. I know. Did you feel that? What did you think? Did he feel different? What did he feel like? Is it a secret? What, what is it? Is it? He do you feel like it's mice. in your mouth? He eats and carnivores. If you're a carnivore, what do you eat? Meat. Meat. No. And they don't have arms to shove it in, so they use their body and the ground and things right to shove it in. Yeah. Sorry. Their jaws can pop out. Okay, that that yeah, out. they don't quite pop out, but they stretch. So this is he the way we eat like this. We put food in our mouth. 
and we kind of have our teeth and we chew around and do that. Snakes have an extra couple ways to make themselves bigger, so they do this too. But they have a hinge on their jaw, so they open and then they can go up like this. And then in addition, we have one solid jawbone, so we can only open ours so far. Snakes have two. So not only can they hinge their mouth open, but they can swing one out and swing another out. Mm -hmm. So they go open, up, and then the jaw, the, the jaws open out even wider, and their skin is like a uh, like a balloon and stretchy. So they can stretch everything, and then they yawn when they're all done, and they pop everything kind of back. And these guys also live in the outback, and when you pet them, it's gonna feel like you're, you're petting the sandbox. <laughs> They're kind of lumpy and bumpy like the sands of the really? desert, so that's what they camouflage. Like like on the walk. Yep. Okay. Now, these guys are called dragons because they kind of have tri triangle-shaped heads like dragons from storybooks, and they've got these little spikes. But they don't have wings, they can't breathe fire. They don't have any special superpowers except maybe winning staring contests. They don't blink very often. <laughs> um, but their spikes are actually soft. So you get a chance to feel them. You guys can touch them. Can we hold um, it? You, you are gonna go where they're, they like to be lap lizards. So you're gonna get a chance to hold them on your lap and then wait a minute, you know, get to cut them. And then we're gonna pass them to the next person. Choose one's off. What do you think? Yeah. yeah, okay. This is Peaches, yes. the bearded dragon. You touch Peaches? Peaches likes a good head massage. All right. Yeah. Can you see your mom over here? Yeah, peaches. I like peaches. Oh, peaches. <laughs> her tail. Yeah, she can't hurt your tail, but it feels kind of rough a little bit, like you're touching tree bark. Do you like that? Is it cool? Oh, you guys are being so kind and gentle. Excellent. Do you notice the holes on the side of her head? Anybody want to guess what those are? Yes. Yeah, same thing as the holes on the side of your head. What did you think? But guess what? Their ears can do something cool? a little special. <laughs> they can close their ears the way you close your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Might be of the yeah. You think he might? Yeah, he might be. He might laugh at me. You're right. It, he might it laugh. It made some sounds. Huh? You think? Wait. All reptiles have don't care for them properly, they don't bother to educate themselves. Um, and then of those that are left, only about 50% make it to their second year. So it's really only about 10% make it in captivity. Blue <laughs> tongue stinks. Stinks are found all over the world. We even have them here in Washington. Most of the time, the little lizard you find in your backyard is a member of her family. And if they get close enough to grab them by the tail, they can make their tail fall off. Cool. And the tail flops around. It's not attached to the lizard anymore. It doesn't hurt the lizard to have that happen. Um, the, the predator will eat the tail and the lizard can run away and they can re slowly regrow their tail. That would be like if a bad guy was chasing you and grabbed you by the arm, you could just make your arm fall off and keep running. <laughs> and all the bad guy had was your arm. <laughs> Um, and when you get home, it would all heal up and you'd start regrowing your arm and it'd be like a little baby arm. <laughs> and it bigger and bigger until you regrow your arm. You know, so it's pretty cool. We, we can't do that. So. Can you see that blue tongue? Um, Oz is a frilled dragon. These guys live in the same place that Sheila is, except he lives in the tree and she lives on the ground. Um, and he wants you to think he's just a piece of branch. <laughs> his camouflage is looking like a tree branch. And all he has to do is open his mouth and, um, and that opens like an umbrella and it makes his head look much bigger than it is. And he opens his mouth and goes makes him look bigger and tougher than it. I'll see if I can get him to open his frill here in just a second. He he just ate, he got, see how full his tummy is? <laughs> He's got to get a fat tummy. He just ate. So we'll see if we can get him. It's warm outside and he, he, may, he may go for it. Um, so, uh, but these guys, when they, when they get scared, they do something a predator doesn't expect. They run at the predator. <laughs> so he stands up on two legs, like you do, opens his mouth, opens his frill, and runs at the predator going, as fast as he can. And the predator doesn't know what to think and says, I'm going to go find something less crazy to eat. And usually, even though he's a little harmless lizard, it works. And, he, and they leave him alone. 
So um, we're going to see if we can make, the reason the, how we get him to open his frill is he has to act a little grumpy. We're going to put him down on the ground. I have to be careful. He can run about 35 miles an hour. Whoa. If, if I let him uh, get going. Look, he's looking at me. <laughs> huh? What do you think? Are you going to open our frill? Oh. Yeah? He's like, I don't want you to pick me up. And you see how he camouflages pretty well in the dirt? Gonna open. Sometimes if I mess with his toes, he gets mad at me. Oh. 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 Is there, is there like a plastic cage you can put? Yeah. Is there like a plastic cage you can put down that, that hole in the way? She just wants to climb up on something. He's more interested. He's more interested in climbing up a tree. If, if I, I'm a... I don't think I'm on my A game today. I'm not sure I could catch him if he went off in the forest. Was he rough? Yeah, we're outside. Do you feel the tree bark? Yes. Yeah. Gentle. Yeah. Cool, huh? Yeah. Hey, you can touch oh, the you're getting kicked again. <laughs> I'm getting kicked in the face. Kicked like in the face, my brother. Does the little pattern look like the lichen on the trees? Is it funny? Yeah, he kind of feels like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I know. You can get rid of it. Da, da, da. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you being a stinker? Yeah. Um, and these guys try to shed its flakes. Now, we are going to meet one of the tiniest marsupials in Australia. This is Matilda and the twins. Now, Matilda is grumpy for two really good reasons. One, this is the middle of the night. Uh -oh. and you, she's about as happy of being, being woken up as, as you would be if I woke you up in the middle of the night and said, Hi, I have 20 people here that would like to pet you. <laughs> You'd probably make a few grumpy noises at me too. The other reason is this that she's a mommy. And she's letting me know. She has a lot of, Oh, her babies are making some noises too. So I'm going to show you the total, but I'm not going to bug her. And then I'm going to show oh you the gosh. <laughs> this is things that Matilda looks like here is um, a flying squirrel. Squirrels are rodents though. These guys are actually possums. They have a little tiny pouch. And she has twin babies. And the babies are holding on to her back. Here's a baby. I'm going to take the babies out here. And you're going to get to meet the babies. These are called sugar gliders in Australia. They're called sugar bears. These guys just opened their eyes about a week ago. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna. You guys are gonna get to do a warm finger pet. Okay, I'm just I'm just calming them down just a little bit. This is my little girl. There's a girl and a boy. It's okay. So these guys live in the eucalyptus forest with the koala bears, and they're called sugar gliders or sugar bears because they have a sweet tooth. They love fruit. They also eat a lot of, of uh, insects, which are great for the trees. And these guys help spread seeds, so they eat foods. They're really messy eaters. They take a bite, and then they shake their head and spray food everywhere. We have to have a shower curtain around their cage. Little monkeys. He looks like a... Uh, I'm just like... He, she, she, she looks like a wasp buzzing, buzzing around a, a broken hind. Was it soft? <laughs> She's so sweet. Fingers. Oh my goodness. Uh -oh. so Are you talking about <laughs> 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 All right. Now we're going to meet our big marsupial. Oh, this marsupial is enjoying the sunshine. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, they like the sun. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. She's going to enjoy the grass. She's going to do some bowing for you. Now this is opal, and opal is a Bennett wallaby. Now opal is a wallaby. Wallabies are the smallest members of the kangaroo family. So all different environments from the, the desert outback to the swamps. Now marsupials are mammals. That means they feed milk to their babies. They have hair or fur. They wear, they wear their bones on the inside. They have lungs. They breathe air. 
Um, but right, the very unusual oh, thing yeah, about this is this house. <laughs> no other animals other than marsupials is about them. Um, I can't prove I, I don't think she, she, she does not have a baby in her pouch, but she may pretty soon. Um, it's the breeding season for them. Now, when they're born, they have to crawl four inches. They're completely blind. They don't have arms. They do it by pulling themselves with their mouths. The mother licks a scent trail. And then they go into the pouch and they find a nipple. And they begin to nurse. That's where milk comes from. That's how they stay alive. And then after that, the nipple swells in the esophagus and it in place for five months. They nurse for five months. Like they never come out at all. They do not stop nursing. They're in the pouch. They're completely nervous. And then they die once they become big enough to be able to let go and be able to nurse it while their eyes open for the first time. And they can, what we call delay implantation, it's called diapause. And they can hold that embryo in stasis for up to a year, deciding when they want to have it. So they can deliver it for up to a year. But they're out. I don't feel good. I'm stressed out. Right now. Yeah. Da, da, da. But they can have babies like an assembly line if they need to. And they're like, you're our, you're okay, okay, it's no wrestling. The wallaby gets nervous oh when, when people start getting the wallaby excited. Soft? She isn't sure if you're alerting danger. Is he soft? Yeah. Look at how cute. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, you know what she's doing? Wallabies have two stomachs. They regurgitate their food like cows do. So they barf up their food and rechew it and swallow it again. <laughs> oh, yep, there it is. Hey, you can say, hey, I saw a wallaby barf today. There we go. That's not every day you can say that. What do you think? <laughs> Aren't you glad we don't have to chew our food look there. What did you think about the wallaby? Was it soft? Hey, boys and girls, you guys were so awesome. You guys sat still for a long time. The other baby, the baby girl. Do you want to come put some more hand sanitizer on so you can get your hands clean? That's a good idea, huh? Now's the time if you want to feel the water. I'll tell her. I don't need to, you know. Okay, you come get a little on your hand, okay? Okay, go ahead. There you go. Red, red, red. There you go. And um, it was a good experience. It worked out. So that day. when 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 he right. when he's in a good mood and he's on his meds or whatever he it is, was, it's, it's was fine. Really weird the all the, the Arlington one, if they have babies, like, they, you, you can know, hold like, them. Yeah. Which yeah. I had to come back the next week, and I was like, oh my yeah. God. Try it. Do it again. I'll get it on video. Let me see. Let me see what happens. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Well, look at you. They jump. <laughs> what was your favorite animal? The lizards. The lizards? Those are really cool. Did you like that you got to hold one in your lap? Yeah. Would it be fun to have a pet lizard? It would be fun if I could hold a lizard. Yeah, totally. That was cool. It was in like a little little pillow. What was your favorite one, huh? Do you like the wallaby? Because you like being in a pouch. You're kind of a wallaby right now. And I like the sugar gliders too, they were cute. And I like the snakes, they were kind of cool, weren't they? Yeah. Maybe they curled around the hand. Yeah. That was neat. I really like all these animals. We had a great time. So this is a homeschooling group with AnimalEncounters.com and they bring, okay, you do it. And they bring animals to your party or to your classroom. So it was really cool. We paid to be part of this, but um, it's definitely worth it. It was a really fun time. So anyway, we'll see you later, pirate friends. If you want to see more, animal encounters leave a comment give us a thumbs up and if you're new here we'd love to have you subscribe all right we'll see you later pirate friends bye